Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and this is the final part of texturing the eye, the human realistic eyeball. Uh, in the last tutorials, we modeled the eye, and then we also textured the iris. Today, we are going to be texturing the rest of the eye, which is the cornea. It's a jam-packed tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the cornea is important because we want to make sure that we still keep that transparency available at the front, and we also want to make sure that we have a map for the whole eye. Now, the question is, how do we UV map this? Well, the reality is, is that we are probably never going to see the back of the eye. So what I'm going to do is actually UV map it in the front, like planar map. So again, I'm going to go to UV planar map and then go to the options. I'm going to choose X and then project. Now this is going to kind of ruin my uh, transmission and that's okay because then I can always recreate it because I can actually go back in here and instead of using a V ramp, I can use a circular. And now we sort of have it back. I still have to kind of tweak it so that it matches a little bit better, but the transparency will work just fine. Easy fix, no problem. All right, let's take a look at our UVs. Looks good. Again, I like to just take this and just kind of scale it down just a tiny bit. And go back to object mode. Let's go to image UV snap. This is going to browse again. I'm in my eyes images, and this is going to be called the cornea UV snap. I'm again choosing a TIFF 1024, apply and close. All right, here's the cornea. Let's go back into our bump map. Let's go ahead and file, save as, and uh, let's make sure that we have a TIFF version. This is the clean version. Again, this is the IRIF, Iris BMP. Turn off the layers, click save. Make sure compression is none, click OK, and let's reconnect it. So again, we're going to go down here. I'm going to scroll down to my bump, and instead of using the, the PSD, which is just a working file, I wanted to use source images. And here's my TIFF. Now you may be asking why we're doing this. It's because the iris and the PSD file are about five megabytes. But if I go into my source images, you'll notice that they're only about three. So it doesn't seem like much like two megabytes, but remember you're trying to create textures that will load fast, it's more effective and efficient, and that it will transfer into any type of program. So some 3D programs do not accept Photoshop, um, and they also take a little bit harder times to read. So you want to make sure that if you take this into Unreal or Unity or any other 3D software, it can read it. So Targas, TIFFs, most of those softwares can read those. Photoshop's not so much, and it's also unnecessarily large. And this is just the eyes. We haven't even done the cornea. We haven't done the character's face, you know, things like that. So it all, it basically adds up. So you want to make sure that all your files are efficient. All right, going back into here, I'm going to close this. And this is the cornea UV snap. Let's create a new layer. This one again is going to be black. Whoops, shift backspace, and I'm going to choose foreground color, which is black. And again, just label. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is what color should this be? Well, I'm going to do a basic color. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the paintbrush and holding down alt, I can get the color sampler and I can pick a color. And you'll notice that the color is a little bit kind of like in the bluish gray. And I'm just going to grab a nice brush, create a new layer. And let me lock these before I forget because I don't want to accidentally mess it up. Just kind of fill it in. Or you can just do a shift backspace and fill it in. Now there is a little bit of pinks and things like that here and red. So you may want to kind of select, a kind of pick that fleshy color, a little bit of that fleshy pink color. And this is usually on the outside of the of here. So again, I'm going to create a new layer just because it's a good idea to just and just kind of paint the outside of it. So we're just going to be able to see a little bit of that red. So I'm going to go in and just kind of create that fleshy tone. I'm using a soft brush because I want it to have like a nice smooth transition. Just kind of go in, just kind of paint some of it in. And I'm using a tablet, so that helps me paint fairly, fairly easy. Okay, the next, the next thing we want to do is 
our veins. Now you could potentially go in and start drawing your own veins. So you can use like a hard brush and then you can just kind of, again, I'm creating a new layer and I can just go in and try to paint my own veins. But you know, if you're like a hardcore artist and you want to, you're more than welcome to, but this is gonna take forever. So I'm gonna show you a trick that I was taught a long time ago. Um, so let me just save this as, this is gonna be my color. Again, make sure this is a PSD, I mean my images, so cornea CLR. Again, my, my goal is if anybody opens it, this file and all my source images and images, they know that what's happening, that anything in, in images is working file, anything in source images is the final file. So hopefully it makes sense. So how do we create these, uh, these veins? We wanna make sure that we create a bunch of veins. Well, um, I'm gonna show you a trick. So let me save this and open up a new file. And uh, one of the tools that I've been used in the past is called the Content Browser. And in the Content Browser, under Paint Effects, there's a lot of pieces in here, and one of them is called Roots. And under Trees, you will find what's called a Root System, right here. So I'm gonna grab this Root System, and I'm just gonna make, now this is con considered a Paint Effect, so I'm gonna go and go to Modify, Convert, Paint effects to polygons. And the next thing I'm gonna do is assign a new material. And we can choose an AI standard surface, that's fine. Because at the end, what I really want is to just get the outline. And what I'm gonna choose is a little bit of a pinky, fleshy color, something like that. And like always, we need a sky. So I don't wanna see the background, so select the light. And let's go into the visibility and just turn this to zero. And we wanna make sure we can see it as flat as possible, so it may be a good idea to go to like the side view, for example. I'm gonna try to render it again, and I can go to the side view over here, press play. Uh, nice about this, if I click here, you can see that this is an alpha map, which is great. Now I do want a higher quality render because I am going to be using this. So let's go to my render settings, and I am going to increase this to a higher quality, so let's say 720, and render. There it is, a nice high quality render. I can click one, one, you can see how large it is, and I'm going to save image. I'm gonna type in .tiff so I can get a higher quality because JPEG has a tendency to compress, or if it, and it doesn't have, JPEGs don't have transparencies. You can use TIFFs or PNGs, whichever you like. Those actually keep transparencies. Here is my veins, I'm gonna Control A, which is select all, Control C, which is copy, Control V, which is paste. All right, now it's up to you how much of the veins you wanna see, as you can see, there's a lot. I am gonna scale them down a little bit. And another thing you'll notice is that they're a straight line and we really need it to wrap around our object. So what I'm gonna use is edit, warp. And with this, I can go in and start warping it so it's a little bit more curved. So again, I can take these and just kind of scale it. I can take this and just kind of bring it in a little bit. Maybe take these out a little bit so they're something like that. So they look a little bit more curved this way. Now I am going to fade them out, so don't worry. So, but go ahead, let's go ahead and do a Control J, which copies it. A control T and rotate these. Now this is creating like a, kind of like a zombie eye, which I'm gonna just show you guys what that looks like, which is, you know, kind of fun. But uh, I'm just kind of bringing these in. I only need a, some of them. Control J, Control T, rotate them, bring them in like this. Now this is a lot of veins. So keep that in mind that this is gonna create a lot of veins. I'm gonna fade them out, but I just wanna remind you this is gonna look crazy. Uh, let's see what that looks like though. I'm really curious, let's save. It is, let me hide my UVs. Save again. Let's go back to the eye and let me delete the history, freeze the transformations. Let's go to cornea. Here's my color. I'm going to crank it to one. Click on that little output file, little folder, and let's grab the cornea color. So you can see that it's very dramatic, but it's starting to look really good. Let's go back into Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and do a control E, which is going to merge all of these layers together. And I'm, I am gonna go ahead and fade them out because it's a little strong, but I'm also gonna create a mask. 
This mask is going to help because I'm going to be painting some of this in and some of it out. So using a, um, a soft brush, you can go in and just kind of fade some of this away. Now this is, um, I'm working with non-destructive. So again, you don't have, you can use any method you want, but it's important that you work in a way that doesn't destroy Cause I can always bring it back if I want to. So if I go back into black, I can kind of bring this in. So if I feel like I lost too many veins, I'm gonna save that. Let's go and change this to two because, and right away you can see that it's already looking a lot better. Now we still need more of these veins. So you're more than welcome to just kind of draw them in. And this is a little strong, so I'm gonna go ahead and fade it. But you do wanna keep at least one or, the, one or two veins. So if you like, let's see, maybe what I'll do is control D on this one and I can grab a lasso and just kind of make a selection. Copy that, paste this in, maybe erase some of these things that are a little too much. Just being very careful as I remove some of this. All right, and then I can just kind of fade it away because I don't need it to be too strong. And of course you can duplicate it Place it somewhere else. You can always flip it. And of course you can er erase some of it. So for example, if you just want a little bit less here, just make it look a little bit different. And let me just fade this one away a little bit more. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It's a little strong, a little too close, but hopefully you get the idea. You can always go back and tweak it. So let's go ahead and move these back a little bit. So now that we have this, we do wanna have a little bit of color variation in our eye, because right now we have red. And we do wanna add a little bit of that around where the pupil is. Let's create a new layer and just kind of go in and just kind of paint it a little bit, just a little bit around the edges. And like always, I wanna go ahead and just kind of decrease the, the opacity. Another layer that I wanna do is kind of capture a little bit more of that blue. So you can see that it's got a little bit of bluish gray as well. So even though, I'm gonna close that, even though everything looks blue uh, or this color, we also want to add a little bit of that blue. So I'm going to go in and just kind of add a little bit of that gray in here as well. And I'm also going to add a little bit of that red as well. Just a little bit, just to kind of make sure that it's not exactly perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hide the UVs. And let's see what that looks like in my eye. Again, let's reload. So already you can see that just by adding a little bit of that color variation, it's really helping it look much more realistic. Let's render. All right, this is what it looks like so far. Again, I'm gonna take a snapshot. So again, we started with this. We put the texture in, we put the bump map in, the specularity, and now we have this. Um, I think the veins are a little close over here. So I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and just tweak a little bit more. Might move it up a little bit. And of course I can always go back into the mask and paint some of it out. So again, I'm just gonna go in and just kind of paint some of it away. I feel like it's a little too strong. All right, let's not forget to save this as a TIFF. So file, save as. Let's go to our source images. Make sure this is a TIFF. Turn off your layers and save. I already saved it earlier. And then don't forget to reconnect it. For the bump map, uh, we just create a hue and saturation layer, which is gonna convert it into grayscale. And then I also did an invert because I wanted to make sure that anything white rises and anything black sinks. So as you can see, the veins will rise and everything else will just sink. Um, don't forget to hide anything that might be a little blotchy. So I went ahead and, and hid those because I really don't need it. I just need this information here. So uh, let's test it out in Maya. So again, go to geometry, go to bump map, make a connection, go to the bump value, 
and then connect the cornea uh, bump. Let's see what that looks like. And so I expect that the bump map is a little strong. We really don't want the veins to be sticking out so far because it's a little too much. Now you can control it in Photoshop. So if you like, you can go into Photoshop and we can create another adjustment layer if we want. And we can choose levels and we can either crunch the values or just take these, uh, this area here and just kind of decrease the contrast. So again, we can save this. You might get an error, that's okay. We can always save a bump too. Still haven't figured out a way to make it not do that, but uh, let's see, let's go back into the bump, type in the value two, and let's compare. I'm gonna take a snapshot. So you can see the difference between this one and this one. I still feel it's a little strong, so now I'm going to use is my bump value or my bump depth and change it to 0.25. And now I'm getting this result. A little bit of bump. The bigger veins have much more bump and we have a nice looking eye. All right, so let's compare what we've done be, uh, this whole tutorial. Over here we have just a eyeball with no texture, just, you know, basic shaders. And then we added the texture, we added the bump, we added the specularity, we added the veins, we added the bump, we fixed the bumps, and then here we are. So that is how you texture a photorealistic eye. Next, let's take a look at it in a character. Just for the sake of comparison, this is what the character looks like with a sphere. This is the, the one with just the model and just basic shaders. Now we're gonna see what it looks like. I'm gonna take a snapshot. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to add the realistic guys and I will be right back. So this is what it looks like right now and this is what it looks like render. So you can see the before and after and how much more realistic and more beautiful she looks. So by using veins to make sure that it's emphasized, you can see her eyes, you can see just about everything. So let me take a different angle. And now you can see on this angle that the refractions are working, everything's, the textures are there, and there you go. What's great about this eyeball is that it's very easy to replace the iris. So if you want to replace this, the only thing you have to do is replace the UV map and with a different color eye, and you can quickly, very quickly change the color. Um, also, if you want to go back, you can always change the, the textures into much more like the color of the cornea to be much more bluer and more red with blotchiness and things like that. And that like zombie eyes fairly quickly. Hopefully you learned a great deal about um, how to create a realistic eye and how much it brings life into your character. So really quickly, oops, I should have kept the other one very quickly. You can create not only model, but texture the eyes fairly quickly. And now that you've created this eye, you can use it for anything. So I actually have a eye already that I use on all my characters. I just have to replace a couple of things like the textures and things like that. But in general, I'll use the same eye. Hopefully you will be able to just continue to use this eye and just changing the iris very quickly. Well, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. Um, if you found this helpful and you feel like somebody else would find this useful in their project to make their characters look more realistic, please share my videos. That would be amazing. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. It helps, it encourages me to create more videos like these. Also, don't forget to tag me in your social media. If you create this eyeball and put it on your characters, I would love to see it. So please uh, take a look at my Instagram or tag me in Twitter and I would love to see your work. And my tag is at Academic Phoenix. I would love to see what you guys have created. Thank you again so much for watching. If you have time, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free 3D models, video trainings, and so much more. So please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to work on this eyeball with me. I really appreciate your I really appreciate you taking the time. Let me know if you guys have any questions by leaving a comment below and I will see you next time.